Hello everybody and welcome to our online course. Today I'm going to talk about EU climate policy and the EU ETS. The goal of this video lecture is to provide an introduction to the topics of the course, provide the general theoretical framework underlying these topics, and describe the historical evolution that has brought us to the current EU ETS. For this purpose, I will address three main questions. Why, when, and how? The first and most obvious question is why? Why do we need a EU climate policy? As you know, climate change is a global problem, and as such, it requires global action and cooperative solutions. However, Pollution in the atmosphere is also a global public bet, which implies free riding behavior. So, to reduce free riding and to induce cooperation, the EU is operating as a club with its own common rules on targets and deadlines. And this brings us to the second question. When? When are these targets to be achieved? The EU set a long-run strategy of decarbonization of the economy. It started with the 2020-20 package that aimed at reducing GHG emissions by 20% by the year 2020. We actually achieved the target well before. In 2016, emissions were already reduced by 23%. This induced the EU to raise the bar raise its ambition to higher, progressively higher targets, 40% in 2030, 60% in 2040, and 80% to 2050. But how can we achieve these ambitious results? The EU climate policy is based on four main building blocks that interact among each other. Renewables, energy efficiency, taxation, and the UETS. At the beginning, in the early 90s, the EU looked for a EU-wide carbon tax, but this required unanimity among member states that was basically impossible to be achieved. Therefore, the EU looked for a valid alternative that was found in carpet trade system that already existed and were implemented elsewhere in the world and adopted for different environmental problems. And this is where our story begins, a story of a follower becoming a leader. In fact, in a few years, the EUTS became the world's largest carbon market and the first transboundary cap and trade system. The system was divided into three phases of increasing length, 2005-2007, the so-called learning phase, A12, and the current phase, 13-20 but we are already heading to the next phase that will cover the whole next decade up to 2030. During these years, we have run into difficulties, mainly market imbalances, price volatility, and low prices, especially due to the economic crisis. To address these problems, the EU has implemented several reforms, so that we can actually describe the UTS as, as a continuously reform directive, a learning by doing process, so to speak. The first major revision was with the Directive 2009-29 that increased the number of sectors covered by the UTS and also the number of greenhouse gases. In February 2014, to restrict the oversupply of permits and raise carbon prices, the EU passed the so-called backloading measure. 900 million allowances were held back from auction and auctions were postponed to the end of the third phase. But backloading was a short-term measure and we were looking for a long-term measure. So in January 2019, market stability reserve will be implemented. The aim is to set predefined rules that automatically adjust the supply of allowances to be auctioned to react to increase the resilience to possible major shocks. Finally, 
a revision for phase four has already been uh, designed, which is based on three main pillars. First, increasing the pace of emission cuts, accelerating the uh, reduction of the cap from minus 174 in phase three to minus 2.2 in phase four, so that the amount of allowances in 2030 will be 43% lower than their initial amount in 2005. Secondly, better target carbon leakage rules, which reduces the number of sectors uh, at risk of carbon leakage exempted from the auctions and also distinguishes the degree of exposure of single sectors to carbon leakage risk. Third, funding low carbon innovation and energy sector modernization to provide financial support to renewables and carbon capture storage and to provide free allowances to energy producers in low-income member states to facilitate, to help the energy transition towards cleaner technologies. In the online material, you will find further details and you can dig deeper into the problems encountered so far, the proposed solutions and the features of the recent reform. I hope you enjoy the course and the reading material too.